Hey everyone, I'm Norn Queen Alexis and welcome back to the channel and welcome Kovu. Yep, that's Kovu all right. He's being a little stinker. Look at him. But today, 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 we are talking about the rarest army in Warhammer 40k slash the Horus Heresy. This is my 3,500, if I bring some extra stuff, 4,000 points of Sisters of Silence. This army is fully converted because the Sister of Silence kit technically only comes as this, this, and this. And I have converted the ever-living hell out of this army to get it to what I want it to be. This army is, is crazy, okay? There's tons and tons and tons and tons of things in this army. And a lot of people don't even know that this army is even playable, let alone being one of the better armies in the Horus Heresy. This army is so good, in fact, that there are flat-out units that I will not take to games because they're really, really, really annoying and powerful. So let's dive in and see what we got here. This army's rules can be found in the Libra Imperium, and it is the second army in here. And it is so much fun. But I will warn you, to play this army, you need to have so much patience because, holy crap, there are so many rules that you need to know because you need to know all of this, all of this, tons and tons and tons and tons and tons of special rules to play this army. And I'm not even joking. I think a lot of them have, like, a ton of special rules as well. Yeah, it is... So many special rules, so many different weapons, weapons that no other army uses and you need to learn them really quickly, except for maybe the bolter, the flamethrowers and other things. But you will see some unique weapons in this army that are taken from, well, different factions throughout Warhammer 40k's history. Like these are taken from um, the troop choice, the Skatari from Admech, and I use them as needlers. Then we have the rifles from the horses I use as their psychic bolt sniper rifle. Yeah, that's a thing. Then we have some combi weapons here. I need to make more combi weapons. I want to get at least 20 of these girls. But yeah, so let's just go in order oh, with the best girl ever. Oh my God, do I love her. She had such a shit ending in the Heresy series and it almost made me stop reading the book. But we have Jenny to crawl here. She is joined, and yes, this is the Warhammer official model, so the sword is bent because of course it is. She is joined by a unit of Raptora. The Raptora are actually kind of insane. Uh, these girls have four to five attacks on the charge, if I can find them real quick. Like I said, there's a lot of units in here. This Taurus Cadre, Raptora Cadre. They have two attacks, and then they go up to three attacks on the charge, and they have all of those rules. So fear, stubborn, precision strike, hatred, chosen warriors, which means all of them can accept challenges, support squad, so you need to take an HQ to bring them, loyalist, they can only ever be loyalist. This army is strictly loyalist, just like the custodies. You cannot ally or be a part of a chaos army and bring this army. You're just not allowed to. And if you do, you're kind of a jerk. So they have bolt pistols, execu execution, executioner blades, frag crack, psych out uh, grenades, retrain armor, which kind of gives them the heavy rule, but not really because they keep their, they, they're light as well. So they're not heavy, they're line, which is insane. And they have the anathema special rules, so they can lower weapon skill down to one when they charge in, especially when they have Jenny to crawl with her. She has once per game, turn your weapon skill and ballistic skill to one. It works on everything but Primarchs, and it's absolutely nuts. This squad cleans up Terminators like they're nothing. Uh, the Executioner Blade on a 6+, plus is just instant death. And, oh my god, do I love these girls. I usually take them in one of these, which can deep strike, and has multi melts and missile launchers. And then the next turn, they run out of it because it's an assault vehicle. They can move and then drop them out and then they can charge out of it. 
Uh, that's the next turn after it deep strikes. It has deep strike and it's a skimmer so it can move and fire all of its weapons. It's fast as well because why the fuck not? Uh, this army, like, it, I don't know how to properly explain the insanity of this army. It is so much fun. But Janita Kroll is the main HQ of this entire army. She's 150 points, which is way, way, way too low for her. Uh, she has the Sword of Oblivion, which is strength uh, five. They are strength three because GW is sexist and thinks women are weaker than men for some reason, even though these are the bodyguards of the goddamn emperor of mankind. And they're also seven foot tall Amazons that stand head to head with space marines, but for some reason, still strength and toughness three. Good job, GW. Uh, there is no actual reason or lore to explain why they're weaker than space marines. And all of their lore about how they make more Sisters of Silence is they selectively breed with humans uh, to make sure that they get the blank gene and then the males go and become assassins and the women become Sisters of Silence. So yeah, you just have to be an anathema or soulless individual to become a sister, a soulless individual who is female at birth to become a Sister of Silence. Yeah. Otherwise, you're thrown into the lot to become a deranged psyker, a deranged anti-psyker monster assassin. Yeah. Also, they're, they're seven foot tall. They're, there's no reason for them. Even in the newest animation, it shows the Sister of Silence just as tall as the Space Marine. It shows the Custodian as a bit bigger. Um, there are Custodians and Sisters that stand at the same height, but there's also three meter tall Custodians, so make of that what you will. But yeah, so the crazy amount of rules here is something that is often forgotten while I'm playing the game because, yeah, she's crazy. Precision Strike and Precision Shot is really fun because you could just pick out... The entire unit has it as well. Uh, on 5+, plus, they could just pick out who they want to kill. Hi, Kovu, you being all cute? Nope, you're running away because I pointed the camera at you. But they're really good at picking out Nuncio Voxes, uh, Sergeants with 2 plus saves, uh, any type of unique weapon, special weapon, and just kill it right off the bat. Uh, any type of melee weapon that strikes at Initiative 1, they will run in and kill before anything happens. Uh, with Light, they get better charging. And yeah. Whew, going over her is going to take a while. So I'm just going to just go over the bare minimum. So then we have the Abyssal Knights. Uh, that is going to be her right here. She is my Abyssal Knight. She has a Power Axe, which puts her up to Strength 5. I could just give her an Executioner Blade, and she's just as good, but I really like the uh, the idea of... No, she has a Paragon Blade, and it's in the form of this giant axe. Uh, there is another one here with a Paragon Blade that's in the form of a giant axe. This is off of the new Space Marine Centurion model. Uh, not Centurion, um... Whatever he is, the the new Horus Heresy guys. And then in their hands, if this thing will, will focus, come on, you can see that six shooter. These are from the Admac. I use them as Archaeotech pistols. So you'll see a bunch of girls with them. These girls are, well, this girl is absolutely cracked and I love her. I usually only take one of her uh, because she has basically the same amount of rules as the other one. So yeah. She's really, really, really good at killing certain units. And you can mix and match her into Imperial forces and just have a really good um, Abyssal Knight in a unit that's really good at just killing certain things. She can also take a unit of Raptora. And I have a unit of Raptora, oops, Raptora here. These two have Power Fists because they actually can get Power Fists. They're Strength 6 Power Fists, but they're really fun because it, it is their only Strength 6 weapon in close combat. Basically, if you're a Dreadnought, you're not going down to these sisters unless they roll fives and sixes to wound you, in which case you're going to die. But other than that, you're totally fine. Uh, I struggle against Leviathans with this army. So people tend, when I bring this army, they tend to bring a lot of Leviathan Dreadnoughts. Uh, moving on, we have a Knight Centura. She is right there. And we have another one right here. This is a Leia from 40k, but, and this one was painted by Han. Uh, and is non-metallic metal paint job, and I absolutely love it. It does stand out with my more metallic army and everything. Um, 
because I, I went full metallic with this army because I really, really wanted the whole vibe of metal and gold and bright gold at that. So it does stick out a little bit, but that's really good because it it's really quick to point out and be like, yeah, that's my Abyssal Knight. Uh, wait, no, this isn't the Abyssal Knight, is it? Uh, not Abyssal Knight Exchange. Or, no, there's one with two bolt pistols. That's the other girl. That's the Silent Judge. Okay, yeah, she's the... She's a Knight Centura. Oh my god, there's so many different names. Did you find a hair tie? I did. Oh, good boy. Anyway, back to the list. Um, there's not real much that makes them too different. It's just what cadre they unlock. Like Chamber of Oblivion, you'll see on most of them. But some of them have Chamber of Judgment, and this unlocks different units that you can bring uh, for your army because the massive limiting factor of Sisters of Silence and why they can't play like normal armies is each one of your characters unlocks another type of unit that they can bring. So if you bring Chamber of Oblivion, you can bring more Oblivion than anything else. If you bring Chamber of Judgment, you can bring more Chamber of Judgment units, but it's only to a certain point and then it caps out. And these even count as the chambers as well, but they gain it through the units that they are dedicated transports to. Moving on, we have my Silent Judge, and she has she is dual wielding Archaeotech pistols and has a mastercrafted executioner great blade. Uh, I absolutely love this model. Uh, two Archaeotech pistols is insane because if you um, use the Archaeotech pistols, they're mastercrafted, so they get re rolls, one re roll each. And they're really powerful. They're, they're pretty good. I like them. I like them a lot. So I tend to take them on everything. Hi, Kovu. Do you mind I'm making a video? He's like, no, affection now. Uh, moving on, we have a Silent Fury. The Silent Fury is a girl on a jet bike. It could be any one of these girls. It is the HQ for them. And technically, I don't have one yet. I need to buy another box of these. These are the Escher Ganger jet bikes with Sisters of Silence painted onto them. Just given their shoulder pad and, I, and their heads, and I think it's a fine conversion. Um, it just gives them more kick in close combat, but doesn't really do much, except for Hatred, Psychers, Demons, and Corrupted, which is only one Corrupted unit in the entire arm, in the entire Heresy game as of right now, and that really annoys me. I honestly think all of the uh, word bearers should count as corrupted, but they don't. And then we have the Questorus Cadre. Questorus Cadres are just the bolter girls uh, taken as a retinue. I never take them. I just, I don't like them. Um, but they can have like a ton of different war gear, like extra flamers, nemesis bolters, astritic destructors, plasma pistols, flamers, power weapons. They can be quite quite good, but I tend to just stick her into a close combat squad and call it good there. So moving on, we have the Vestal Cadre. Now my Vestals, where are my Vestals? They are right here. Now these are converted, obviously. These are the Imperial Guard Medic Backs. And then I have the weapon that they use uh, for the Medic, um, for like cutting through armor and everything and administering well, probably death. Let's let's be fair, but it's the it's the nuncio, um, the narthesium. That's what it's called. They have a handheld narthesium, and they all have power axes because they can. And they all have a three plus save. Uh, they have fleet, stubborn, precision, hatred, chosen warrior. So you can actually accept challenges with them as well uh, if you have multiples in the squad. Um, they have a ton of different grenades, and they have the cloak. And this cloak, what it does is it makes the unit count as if they're three inches away for the terms of shooting at them. So, again, this army is insane. It's got kind of Alpha Legion rules going on with it as well. Uh, oh, I lied. That's the Raptor Quadra. <laughs> My bad. The Night Vestals don't have that, but they do have the Narthesium. Now, the cool thing about this unit is uh, they can have a Narthesium, a Power Axe, an, Artif um, an Archaeotech Pistol, and... Yeah, they're they're really 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 good. Uh, technically, they have power weapons. Yeah, power axes. 
And what happens with them is similar to apothecaries when you attach them, they just become a part of the squad. Uh, when deployed into the battlefield, either at the start of the battle or when arriving from reserves, all model with this uh, all models with this special rule in the unit must be placed within unit coherency, but afterward operate independently and are treated as its own unit. So unlike the knight, uh, unlike the apothecary, when the unit dies, they don't die. They just join a squad because they are a character. Um, they are a character, right? Yeah, independent character. So these can join any Imperial army. They're really good for attaching to like, um, say you have a, a salamander unit, but you don't want to take, you have the salamander terminators, but you don't want to take a specific, um, the Primus Medicae to attach to the unit. You can ally in some Sisters of Silence, get three of these girls and attach them to three different units because they don't care about that. And they give a five up, feel no pain. And they're pretty badass in combat. So I like these girls. Really good as allies, really good on their own. I usually attach them to Raptor Cadres and sometimes my uh, Bolters. Because, well, they're the ones that are going to go into combat. Or these are the ones that are going to be shot at. And these are the ones that are going to go into combat. Moving on from there, we have the Oblivion Knights. That is these girls as well. Uh, not the two of Power Fist, but Oblivion Knights are just the standard sword girls. Uh, they are strength five, and they have two attacks apiece, three on the charge, with a power weapon that is AP three to AP two. I got to double check that really quickly. I forget where their power weapon is, because this book sucks when it comes. All the heresy books suck when it comes to layouts. Uh, I think this is yeah, this is the Paragon Blade, so it should be somewhere over here. We have the Solarite weapons, power weapons, and the Executioner Great Blade is there. Uh, strength plus two, AP three, melee two-handed, rending six plus. So on sixes, they become AP, uh, they cut through armor, um, which is really good. Forces people to take invo saves. Uh, they have two attacks. They don't get the plus one for having pistols because it's a two-handed weapon. But yeah, whatever. They only need the three attacks to usually take down a unit. Their weapon skill for the elites are five, four for the troops. Um, I think that's the way it is. Yeah, the squads are weapon skill for the elite ones. Hi, Kovu. All right. Are you good? Can you fix that? No? Okay. But yeah, I usually take these girls as the elites. Here, you can go in there. Go right ahead. Go ahead. And... Blop. Good boy. I usually take these girls as the elite Oblivion Knights, and I don't tend to take them as the troop choices because I have uh, the Bolter Girls as troops, I have the Needle Rifles as troops, and that's more than enough for me. I tend to take them as five-woman squads with uh, Voxes and everything and uh, Augury Scanners to keep people away, and that that is just good enough. It works. So, Close Combat Girls, really good. Then we have an Eradicator squad cadre that is these girls right here. So it's five girls with combi meltas. Uh, I want to get this squad up to 10. I think they can go up higher than... No, they're just 10. And they can take um, any magna combi weapon or any minor combi weapon. And they can take augury scanners, nuncio voxes, compression tanks, power weapons. Or the mistress can take a power weapon. So I did with the power axe. But yeah, it's, it's just combi weapons. I need to get um, another two boxes, no, three boxes of Sisters of Silence to fill this out so I can have two full squads of these dropping out of those just to eradicate something. That'll help with the them not having the ability to crack heavy tanks without their transports or dealing with dreadnoughts just to get those extra wounds. And then moving on, we have the Persecutor Cadre. This is the one with just the bolters. These are the bolter girls right here. Nothing really to talk about with them. I mostly just use them as troop choices that are dirt cheap because they're only 65 points for five of them. So they go up to 75 points with the Nuncio Vox. And that's pretty much it. That's all I throw on them. Just 75 point unit, uh, each unit. And all they do is just zone out my opponent and slowly walk up the board while everything else harasses the opponent. 
Then we have the Vigilator Kadra. This is the one with the blades. It's again them, but you know, the troop choice version of them. I never take them because they only have one attack, but they can go up to 15 in a unit, which is cool to know. Also, these girls can also go up to 15 in a unit. Um, I never do it, but it is something you can do. They don't benefit from anything. So yeah. And then we have the Acquisitor. These are the Acquisitors. I have them all equipped identically. They just have the Missile Launcher and the multi melters, And that, that's pretty much it. Let's see. They have the Hall Mounted Helion Cannon or Heavy Cannon Array. And then the Vitrain uh, Missile Launcher. And then I sub that out for the multi melta wherever it is. Options, yeah, Twin Link multi melta for no additional point cost. So 150 points for a deep striking super unit. It has outflank, deep strike, night vision. It's an assault vehicle. It, it's so good. <laughs> it is insanely good. This thing is crazy. And it's a skimmer that moves 16, uh, 16 miles per hour. Moves 16 inches a turn. Like you can start these things behind buildings, fly over the building, drop out the sisters, shoot with these things, have the sisters charge, turn one, and it's really, really, really good. Then we have the Pursuer Kadra, probably the most unique squad in the entirety of the Sisters of Silence. This squad can take dinosaurs. Uh, my dinosaurs are currently with my base wolves, so imagine there's a couple of dinosaurs here. Anyway, I originally built these girls to be the first edition ones, which could only take close combat weapons. So they all had chain swords. They have a couple of dogs and a couple of birds. There is so much to talk about with this. So I run them all with um, Executioner Great Blades. Even the dogs and the birds somehow, they can get them as well. I really want to get these dogs to have the blades in their mouth, like that one dog from uh, Elden Ring. But they're kind of crazy because you have the Pursuit, you have the Pursuers, the Pursuit Mistress, okay? Just the standard Sisters of Silence. And they have... Uh, Fleet, Stubborn, Hatred, Loyalist, and uh, Pursuit Beasts. And the Pursuit Beasts can be Cyber Mastiffs, Cyber Fielnids, Cyber Cayman, and Cyber Raptors. Now, I take those quite literally. That is a dog, a cat, a crocodile, and a rat, and a bird of prey. So, I have an owl and a hawk. I have a couple of wolves. You can do the smaller wolves, um... And then I use the dinosaurs to represent the crocodiles. These all have varying different movements and varying different abilities. I tend to take uh, one crocodile to give the unit, uh, to give that model specifically feel no pain. Um, I use the bird for shrouded for plus, which is actually insane because you can take multiple wounds on it. Uh, it only has one wound, but you could just keep allocating wounds to it to try to survive. And they all have light and... Oh, well, the Cayman doesn't have light. It just has skirmish. Um, the Cyber Mastiff has Fleet uh, and Furious Charge, which is also really good, plus one attack. Um, and the Cat has Rage, which gives it an additional one attack. So this unit can get a crazy number of attacks, be gigantic, and still fit inside one of these. And you can give it one of these characters or feel no pain from one of these, which applies to them because they're sisters of silence, because they know how to take care of their good boys. And I absolutely love this unit. Is it good? Arguably no, it, but is it funny? Yes. This unit costs more than the 10 girls here that will do more damage. Um, these girls are just better because they're cheaper, more efficient. And overall, just a better choice. But I can take a crocodile, an alligator, a crocodile, a bird, a dog, and a cat in a unit with some sisters. Like, let's be real. Or I can have sisters who are crazy cat ladies and just have like 15 cats. That's way better to me. Moving on, we have the Firebrand Cadre. This is the fast attack unit. Uh, these are the sisters with flamethrowers. I love these girls. They're super good. Uh, I tend to give them uh, the additional tank to make them strength six uh, flamethrowers, but they then cost a lot of points. 
but they jump out of one of these and burn an entire squad to death. Usually 10 of them can take out a five-man Terminator unit with little to no problem. We have the Subjugator Cadre. These are the jet bikes. Uh, the jet bikes are insane and have one of the best weapons in all of Horus Heresy, known as the Snare Cannon. The Snare Cannon lowers opponent's movement. And it is the most disrespectful weapon in the entirety of the Horus Heresy. Because you can stop your opponent from moving at all. If they try to go over a piece of terrain and you snared them down to one inch, they cannot move. Because they need two inches to even enter the terrain. It is so disrespectful that I don't take it anymore and I take the Astritic Destructor, which is kind of like a death ray. COVID decided to be in the video again. He's like, ooh, sisters. I like sisters. Oh, I'm on camera, so I'm going to look away awkwardly. But this unit is super good, but very expensive. I want to get three units of it just to complete the army, but I tend not to bring this unit unless I'm playing 4,000 plus points. It's my own little, you know, stopping myself. We have a couple of termites in this army, but I don't actually have the termites anymore. I gave them to my buddy Lee. Because I, I kind of have these, and these are enough, and they're better anyway, and every unit can take them. So I haven't found a reason to bring the termite. So yeah, I just kind of got rid of it. With Space Marines, it's pretty good. And I think that is it for this army. No, we have the Expurgator squads. <clears throat> I don't know how you're supposed to say that except for Expurgator. And that's how I'm going to say it from now on. Uh, this is the squad with the heavy flamethrowers. This is how I tend to run these girls, but they can also swap those out for the Astritic Destructor, the Snare Cannon, or just a bunch of anti-Psyker missile launchers, which are insane considering how often you run into Psykers in this edition. So I tend to run these with the heavy flamethrowers, but I do want to get a whole squad of sisters with missile launchers and another squad with... Uh, the lasers because I think it would be cool. Oh, yeah, these are the girls with the needle guns These are the same girls as these. It's just a different upgrade to give them the needle gun. I forgot to mention that uh, For the sanctions cadre, that's the girls with the Vitrain nemesis bolter and This is the anti -sni anti sniper anti psyker I combined the two words in my head, but it still said sniper anyway anti sniper uh, nemesis squad that has 72 inch range just like the normal nemesis squad but for sisters it's a heavy support choice instead of a troop choice they're hitting on twos right uh, no they're not they're hitting on threes uh, so they're not as good as the regular ones but they do have marked for death so they're better yeah they also have stubborn hatred and all the other silly things they also count as even further away to the opponent than they are normally so this unit can actually shoot a sniper unit at 72 inches away, and that sniper unit can't return fire. I just find that really amusing. So my future plans for this army is to get another squad of this, more sword girls. I want at least probably like 20 to 30 more. I know that's a lot, but yeah. I want to get another squad of these. Uh, I want to make them a bit better this time. I just have to find... I might make them out of Hospitealers, maybe, but I don't like the Hospitealer. So I gotta figure it out how I wanna make these girls. Uh, I wanna fill this squad out because this is a squad with snare guns, um, but getting that weapon, which is the snare weapon from the Gene Steel Occult, is extremely hard. And out of the six boxes I bought, I only got six, so it is a pain in the ass to get. If you guys have these at all, I, I need them, peace. Um, I want to switch all these girls out to have their Executioner Great Blades again, so I'm probably going to pop their arms off and replace them. Uh, I want to get missile launchers. I want to get more sniper rifles. I want to get at least 30 with sniper rifles. I want to get two squads of these, if not three. But this army can't really play at a really high point game, so there's not much reason to expand it, aside from me wanting to collect. Oh yeah, I want to get uh, six more sisters to have power fists because it's cool. But yeah, the reason that I say that this is the rarest army in all of 40k 
isn't because, oh, well, second edition Kriegers are, are even more rare, or is some random Imperial Guard army is more rare. They're not. No one in Iceland has this army but me. Nobody in probably most of the world has this army. Like, just period. I think I've seen one battle report with this army ever. I absolutely love the Sisters of Silence. It's a way of playing women in Horus Heresy that isn't just guard and is on par with Space Marines. And honestly is very fucking cool and requires a lot of work to make them look good with their new weapons and everything. Especially if you're going to convert the way I did, where you have to have all of these weapons and force them to fit via using other hands, Sisters of Battles bits... Uh, ad mech bits, forcing them to fit, or just trying your best. This army is a converter's dream. And I know a lot of people are like, oh, well, if they just made the options, people would play it. I, I like converting some armies. I like heresy for not having certain things. And for me, having to make them out of existing kits, I like kit bashing. So this army was not only a dream of mine, that I finally have, but it was also just a ton of fun. Kovu, get out of the closet. Kovu, it's 2024. You can't go in the closet. Thank you. Anyway, guys, I'm Norn Queen Alexis. I love you guys. Bye.